Hello, I'm Matthew Barton and I run the European and Asian Works of Art Sales at Olympia Auctions in London. I've been looking at silver since 1986, huh, before many of you were born I suspect. Today I'd like to talk to you about what I hope will be the mildly diverting subject of novelty silver. This is an admittedly loose category, but one which I define as any silver which contains an element of surprise. These are perhaps an example of what I mean. Victorian silver gilt of 1855, with rather strange spumy bowls issuing from flowered leafy bases. Not, I hope you'll agree, the usual shape for a pair of salt cellars. The idea of novelties in silver has a long history, but in the late medieval period only an exceptional and wealthy few would enjoy the delights of having salt conveyed to them in a galleon such as this, the Burley Neff of the 1520s, now at the Victoria and Albert Museum. What I really want to talk about, however, are not such great rarities, but later objects that could be acquired by anyone, as the following examples all from my past auctions testify. By the 18th century, the widening spread of wealth meant silversmiths could expand their repertoire, many specialising in what were often called toys at the time. Anyone with aspirations to be a gentleman had a snuff box, so not surprisingly a profusion of boxes began to appear, such as this timepiece snuff box. The German-made mid-18th century gilded silver fitted with a London watch movement in the lid. Or this, another German box, slightly earlier in date, and fitted this time with a perpetual calendar, so you could check the date whilst taking your snuff. Useful in lockdown, perhaps, when one can find it difficult to remember what day of the week it is. Novelties were by no means confined to boxes. Candlesticks began to appear in various figural guises, commonly inspired by porcelain precursors, and novelties often included tableware, such as this set of mid-18th century teaspoons, made in London by John Derisat, the stems delightfully moulded as currant twigs crawling with caterpillars and ladybirds. It was the 19th century, however, that really saw the growth in popularity of novelty items. Faithful copies of natural forms, such as this peony blossom inkwell of 1839, or this eponymously formed nutmeg grater of the same date, began to appear. Novelties were not restricted just to small objects. Later under Victoria's reign you might display fetchingly arranged flowers in this German silver boot. Your hock before dinner might be nicely chilled in this Elkington Electroplate wine cooler of 1877, replicating a bound wooden pail. At dinner you could then season your food with this pair of pepperettes by Hennel of 1868 and afterwards comfortably settle down to a cigar, lighting it off the flame coming from the pipe in the terrier's mouth. This characterful group of 1880, again by Hennel, is based on a dog painting by Landseer called Low Life, although enjoying a cigar under such circumstances seems like high life to me. If your heavy Victorian dinner has brought on a bout of indigestion, Popping a couple of dyspepsia pills from little Brazil nut-shaped containers like these would surely cure your ills. The Edwardians, of course, developed the theme, so you might find barrow loads of bonbons proffered from a dish like this, made by the famous firm of William Comins and Son. The newly developed motor car is a recurrent theme of the period, as in this pincushion of 1906 or this chauffeur pepperette of 1908. Come 1909, the latest craze was the teddy bear, a mania recently arrived from America, following Teddy Roosevelt's famous refusal to shout, shoot a brown bear. A number of Birmingham makers produced an array of teddy-inspired silver trinkets at this date, and as we shall see, spread the fad across the empire. I can't help wondering how often these particular teddies held a card announcing curry for dinner, since their original box reveals that they were sold in Utkamond, the southern Indian hill station, by Barton and Son, a firm that rather marvellously is still trading from premises in Hyderabad today. 
As you might expect, the Jazz Age is well represented by tobacco-related items. Perhaps my favourite of the things we've sold from this period has to be this Italian silver and enamel compact. Modelled as an Alfa Romeo 6C with James Young drophead coupe coachwork, it artfully conceals a lipstick, rouge, powder and scent compartments, as well as a handy mirror. The second half of the 20th century is represented here by the well-known Stuart Devlin with his surprise Christmas boxes produced annually to chime with the 12 days of Christmas, as well as his surprise Easter eggs. Inventiveness continues, however, such as in this travelling set chess set, designed by the film producer Cy Enfield. It was whilst on location making Zulu in 1964 and frustrated by the set he was using that Enfield was inspired by the notion of pieces that would interlock to form a cylinder, as seen here. I hope you've enjoyed this little divertisement into novelty silver. Please do contact us at Olympia Auctions, perhaps to make a virtual appointment, should you have items you wish to investigate further, whether novel or not. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.